Hi, and today we're going to talk about mixing and matching equipment. My chair is squeaky today for some reason. Not sure why. What I did is I combined two uh, questions together. So Roger in Friday Harbor, Washington. I wonder how the hell it got that name, Friday Harbor. Maybe ships only came in on Friday. Anyway, Paul. Almost all audiophiles have mixed and matched audio equipment without regard to input and output. Is this very important? And if so, how important? And John in New Jersey asks, what's the rule of thumb, or, or if there even is a rule of thumb, for matching the impedance of our components from the source to the speakers? For example, from the phono preamplifier uh, to the main preamplifier, from there to the amplifier, or or there are other factors we should take into consideration. So, John and Roger, thank you. That's, that, that's a good question. One we get asked a lot because when you're playing with separates, you are interconnecting a multitude of boxes together and hoping for a good result. So our chain might look, if we have a vinyl uh, setup, our chain might look like a turntable a phono preamplifier, a preamplifier, a power amplifier, and a set of speakers, or a DAC setup. You might have a CD player, a transport, maybe a server, and on. But all of these products are connected together by interconnects. And if we were to combine them all together in what we would call either an integrated amplifier, hence the name, it's an amplifier that integrates all of these separate components, or a receiver, which is an integrated amplifier with a radio tuner inside of it. And let's face it, today's modern receivers are freaking Swiss Army knives. I mean, look at these things. Back, back in my day, uh, a receiver is pretty simple. It had an AM, FM tuner, and a power amplifier and a preamplifier. It's pretty straightforward. Today, you know, for three hundred dollars, you can you can go down to Best Buy, or I mean, hell, you can go to Walmart, and you can get a five-channel uh, uh, receiver with a surround sound processor inside, a radio, internet connectivity. It, it, this thing is the Swiss Army knife of uh, of audio, and how they do that for three hundred bucks, and and. I, I have no idea. And some of them are very decent products. So for people like us that make handcrafted high-performance audio products, that's like, wow, I, I'd be hard-pressed to make you know an awesome remote control for that kind of money and still stay afloat. But I suppose it's because they, they make millions of them where we make hundreds or sometimes thousands, if you will. But back to the question. We're, we're talking about separates. And if you have an integrated or you have a receiver, those separate components that we're referring to are all packaged within a single box and some knowledgeable engineer has already connected them properly. So let's start at the beginning. One of the primary things that we have to think about is impedance. So there's a couple of things actually, impedance and sensitivity. But let's talk about impedance. Typically, the way this works is that the output impedance of a device, ignoring something like a turntable, but on a piece of electronics, typically has a low output impedance and its input is a high output impedance. So it's easy for a low impedance device to drive a high impedance. And easiest way to think about that, what's the best way to think about that? If, if we have a low impedance, so a speaker, uh, there, there we go. <clears throat> a speaker is a low impedance device. It's about eight ohms, and, and many of them are four ohms. What does that mean? Well, in order to drive a low impedance product, device, you need power. Okay, so uh, uh, we know that a speaker that has four ohms on its input, that's a low impedance. Sometimes they dip down as low as two ohms. Zero, by the way, being a dead short. Okay, 
uh, zero is the lowest impedance that you can get, and that's where it just, like, you know, stick a couple of butter knives, don't do this, stick a couple of butter knives into a wall socket and <laughs> push them like that. That's zero impedance, and that will cause the circuit breakers to blow and fire and all that, because all that energy from that plug is trying to go and drive that impedance, but since it's essentially zero, it can't. So it does it the best it can. So a power amplifier, which has a low impedance output, and which has to be much lower than the impedance that it's driving, like the speaker, um, is able to produce power into that low impedance load. So even in that example where a uh, an amplifier is driving a speaker, the output of the amplifier has to be far lower in impedance than what it's driving, which is the speaker with a higher impedance. So back to my point, if you have a phono preamplifier, its output impedance needs to be very low. And then the input impedance to say the preamplifier is very high. What does that mean? It means that the phono preamplifier doesn't need much juice to drive the input of the preamp. And the input of the preamp is just tickling it just a little bit, which is just drawing a very little bit of current. You don't want to go the opposite way because then a high output impedance uh, can't drive a low output impedance because if it tried to do that, you would lose all your voltage. You'd have It would just drop the level down dramatically because it doesn't have the power to drive it, okay? so. Low output impedance on the output drives high input impedance on the input, and a cable matches the two or connects the two together. The, 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 the last part of it is sensitivity. And, and this is where it gets a little more complicated. Now, typically, there are some unwritten standards, and those standards are, for example, a CD player typically adheres to this sort of unofficial standard of two volts that it puts out for the full output of uh, to be found on a CD. That two volts is the same level that most power amplifiers need to come to their full output. So if you were to take the output of your CD player and plug it directly into your power amplifier, you on loud passages, you'd probably either clip the power amplifier or certainly get it very close to the full output that it could uh, produce. And it would be very loud. So we want to put a preamp in between it and turn down that voltage coming out of our CD player. So we need to match sensitivities so that uh, you don't put too much or too little. If you have too little voltage coming in, then you won't have enough gain. And these kind of things seem to be complicated, but generally, Stuff just matches together just fine. So those, those are the things you want to look out for. And, and, of course, the glue that holds all of this together, cables. And cables are a whole different story we can get into later. But cables have to be synergistic, as do the pieces that we connect together. And we'll, we'll talk about synergism between components and cables and everything that works together to form a beautiful high-end audio system. But that's enough for this one. Thanks for, thanks for asking both those questions. Appreciate it. Bye-bye.